Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new series that I will be bringing to my channel called How to Be Diamond. The point of the series is to try and improve your guys' sense of judgment in a team fight and just in general of your League of Legends games. And of course, this is going to be done by analyzing a high level team fight in the Diamond 1 slash Challenger ELO. Hopefully this will give you more insight into the players' minds as I dissect exactly why a certain player did what they did and why it worked out for his team. Since this is the first episode, if you guys have any suggestions, please write them in the comments below on how to improve this series. The blue team did just lose their vein, but they still decide to go for Baron thinking they still have the upper hand and can do it fast enough while the Rengar decides to distract anyone trying to make progress to the Baron pit. As I freeze the clip, the first thing to point out is that the blue team is quite ahead in gold kills and turrets as opposed to the red team, even though it is a 4v5 right now. But this does not matter a whole lot since Vayne is not the main carry. Looking at her items, she isn't the strongest and her kills aren't the best as opposed to someone like Ziggs who has 6 kills and 3 assists. Taking another look at the items, Rangar is probably the tankiest person on the team other than potentially the Elise. This is probably why he was chosen to be outside of the Baron Pit to try and stall the red team from making much more further progress to the area. Since he's not only able to tank quite a bit of damage, but with the Hydra he's also able to dish out pretty good damage as well. So his whole purpose in this 4v5 Baron scenario is to try and make the enemy team get to the Baron Pit as slow as possible. Also the Elise has to be in the Baron Pit since she is the jungler and she does have the smite. Very important to make sure that the Baron kill is secured. Ziggs and Sona have very good positioning, especially for Ziggs since he is the most fed person. This allows them to be able to damage Baron down while also being able to throw any skill shots over the wall to try and help the Rengar while he is stalling the red team. You can also see that Sona does have her ulti ready and she put herself in a position where if she needs to, she can throw it out pretty easily. Especially if she has to ulti the enemy jungler to try and prevent them from coming into the Baron pit to try and steal it. And finally, the blue team went for Baron even though they were down one person being the Vayne because they knew that the enemy team has to heal up and as you can see in the minimap, two people, the Sinjur and the Varus are still making their way to the Baron pit while Baron is already less than half HP. This was a wise but very risky call from the shot caller of the blue team but clearly it's working out pretty well so far. As we resume the clip you can see the Rengar is doing best he can to try and stall them while the enemy Sinjur and Varus are making their way over to the Baron area. As I freeze it you can see that the Baron's HP is at the level where the smite wars will start to begin between the junglers. With that being said you can see that Shivana is starting to make her way to the Baron pit as fast as she can but she does have no ulti so she does have to walk. Next taking a look at what Rengar is doing he is inside of his ulti and he's actually gonna turn onto this Lulu and completely eliminate her but since he does have five stacks of his passive ready to go maybe the better option could have been to jump on the Shivana to snare her down to just ensure that she will not get into the Baron area and there will be no smite wars going on making sure that his team does get the Baron however maybe the Rengar knew that she won't make it in time since at least with the Baron being very low can just simply use her Q in spider form to execute it and then finish it off with the smite dealing massive damage which in turn he thought it would be a better idea to just simply eliminate a target from the fight that's about to happen as opposed to try and stall someone who's probably not gonna make it. As the clip does continue, you see the Rengar does turn onto the Lulu and picks her off without much problem. And as I freeze it once more, you see the Elise was able to execute the Baron and smite it for her team. The Nasus and the Shirvana seem to be a little too deep in from their attempt to contest the Baron. And Ziggs responds to this with a beautiful minefield right on top of the Nasus, completely halting his progress along with Shirvana's. From here, the Sona, the Ziggs, and the Elise can probably continue to kite the Nasus and the Shirvana since they have no real way to get to them, while the Rengar in the back is still going to continue to make presence while he is keeping the two main damage dealers at bay for as long as he can. As the clip is resumed, you can see that that is indeed the case since Nasus and Shirvana have no real way to get to the three members that are just simply kiting them with that much problem, the Ziggs gets a beautiful ulti and finishes off the Nasus. The Rango was able to keep the Varus at bay for quite some time as he ended up escaping to the double golems and now it's going to be a 3 on 3 for a short while. The Sona gets a little too far in and ends up blowing exhaust onto the Varus while Elise also snares him to ensure that Sona survives. As the three members of the blue team are keeping the remaining three enemy players busy, in a very prolonged fight to try and take attention away from the Rango that got away, you can see that he's finally returning from the back after gaining some HP back off of the double golems probably thanks to his W and his Hydra. And since the red team was so distracted by the three people of the blue team, they have no idea that the Rengar is right behind them and he's about to perform a beautiful flank. And that is exactly what happens as the Rengar goes onto the Syndra and bursts her in a matter of seconds and he then switches his focus to the Varus who ends up dying to the Ziggs instead but all that's left is a very low HP Shivana as the Sona gets a beautiful flash over the Baron Pit and gets the passive power core that slows the Shivana just in time for the Elise to catch up to her and finish off the kill. As you can tell that there was quite a lot of strategy put into that fight even though it may not seem like it at first glance. Hopefully that will give you guys a better idea of how to position yourself, what to do with certain scenarios and maybe just instead of blindly going for Baron, planning it out and deciding that certain people should do Baron, certain people should distract might be a better choice. 
I want to replay the whole fight one more time, this time in the normal speed without any commentary so you guys can see just how much goes on in a matter of seconds in a game of League of Legends. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this new series. If you did, please throw in a like and also in the comments below tell me what you liked about it or maybe what you think should be improved. Enjoy the fight guys and hope to see you for the next episode. Peace.